to Bloomberg Quaint. We are inside the facility of Godrej and Boys, which manufactures airframe for the Brahmos Aerospace. I have with me Dr. Suji Mishra, who is the MD and CEO of Brahmos Aerospace, and uh, Mr. Jamshed Godrej, chairman of Godrej and Boys. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on Bloomberg Coin. To begin with, you know, it's a remarkable day for you. You've sub you're going to hand over the 100th airplane for Brahmos. Uh, Mr. Godrej, can you just give us, give us an idea of the journey that you have taken place in the last uh, 17 years? Yes. Well, you know, we started uh, this whole uh, journey because uh, the late Dr. Abdul Kalam came to meet me and said that, look, I'm involved in this program. I want India and Russia to come together and make a cruise supersonic missile. And I want you to be part of this journey. And uh, frankly, I didn't know at all what we were getting into. But he was so confident that we can do it. So we said yes. And it's taken us 17 years uh, to come to a stage where we've delivered 100 uh, sets. But it took about 10 years for us to understand the complexity, make all the models, you know, prove all the different technologies, uh, get the approvals, etc. And then we've been able to make a uh, hundred up till now. That's a story uh, very different, you know, because the, he's was not only called the missile man, but he was the only person who had faith in the private sector to deliver goods, right? And DRDO being the biggest arm which has been partnering with private sector. Uh, you see, today is uh, uh, today is a red mark day in the history of Brahmos, DRDO, and uh, Godrays, because uh, we have uh, produced 100 uh, F3 section. F3 section is a fuel management system, and uh, this is one of the most complicated piece of engineering uh, made ever by any company in our country. And uh, this uh, F3 section, uh, it has taken almost 17 years to reach to 100's number. In addition to that, uh, we have launched today the manufacturing of uh, 100 more systems for air application. A test of that we saw on November 22nd when Sukhoi fired you the Brahmos, right. right? You are right. You have seen it on 22nd November uh, when we conducted the flight test of Brahmos air version from the uh, Sukhoi 30 and uh, India became a proud nation the first and only proud nation in the world to have such capabilities. You know, uh, I'm, I'm sure you've been working on that air version for many years along with HAL because HAL manufactures uh, Sukhoi in India. Uh, by when do you expect Air Force to induct Brahmos uh, into it? We have the Army and the Navy who have already inducted it. It's only the air version which needs to be done, right? Uh, there are schedule of activities which are required to be completed. Uh, before uh, the system gets inducted into the Air Force and uh, they are the users and uh, they know very well how when to do, how to do and it's a decision which they must take. We are, uh, we have designed, we have tested and uh, we are willing to deliver them as per the schedule, Mr. as Kovic, per the contract. This, this facility has been, you know, a remarkable one in that sense because you have not only not built made scale here but also the knowledge which has been gained in producing because if you have taken 17 years for the 100 you are now targeting next 100 for in next three years well i think three to five years yes so that means that you know the capability of the godrej group in executing the high level of uh, technology and manufacturing uh, required for this has reached a level where you can go into civil production and you know you so have we are currently we are making about two a month and we are planning to make four a month as you know within uh, a year or so and i think that uh, you know the capability is already here i think we have to make sure that everything comes together from the raw material to the final testing and what about the kind of investments because last decade or so has been uh, you know patient wait for companies like private uh, in private sector like you to well, you know invest and wait so that it reaches a level where it becomes, you know, commercially viable for the companies. Yeah, so as I said, you know, it's taken us 10 years first to understand and get into serial production. And, uh, you know, the capabilities are more to do with people uh, and not just the machines. You know, I mean, machines, anybody can, but how to make those machines deliver the type of precision that is required, you know, and the capabilities that are... Once you have that capability, it's not a lot of investment to ramp it up. Uh, you know, um, Dr. Mishra, you know, 
how how have you seen the private sector emerging as one of the source for you know partnering with uh, DRDO in the last many years? Because we have seen a lot of companies emerging now and saying that okay, we want to be part of this Make in India process for defence. And but the opportunities are now. It's only now it's opening up, right? Uh, you see, DRDO is basically responsible for research and development. And uh, we produce uh, prototypes, maybe one, two, three, four numbers. But when it comes to the numbers, hundreds of uh, the systems have to be produced. Then the role of uh, private companies uh, or public sector companies like uh, Godrej, it becomes very important. Because they have the capability, they have capital, they have trained human resource, and uh, they, have, they have willingness, uh, you can say the, the, the muscle to execute the contract. So this is the right time. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, our you know, missile man, our guru, and our erstwhile president, Dr. Abdul Kalam, uh, he has chosen uh, Godrace to partner with Brahmos and uh, come out with a, this F3 section. So today I really thank because I see around and there is no other company which is having such capability to produce such a complicated uh, section in such a short time. And uh, the Goddess has done a fantastic job. Uh, on behalf of Brahmos Aerospace, we are very thankful to Mr. Jamshid Godrej for achieving this remarkable feat. How have you seen the entire private sector ecosystem developing around this? As Brahmos CEO, you have, you're not only involved in, uh, I would say, uh, marketing of it, but also, you know, you have been uh, for in the forefront of ensuring that there's an ecosystem which supports companies like Go Godrej uh, and others to do it. So have you seen the private sector coming up to that age where you know, there is an ecosystem now available? Because earlier the first thing what DRDO DR, DR used to do was, okay, we have the defense PSUs, let them make it. But now you have the attitude change, saying let's get the private sector in. So have you seen that private sector being uh, nurtured and there's an ecosystem coming in? Uh, and after that, you know, I want your take on it as well. Uh, as a as a weapon system designer and uh, responsible to deliver, execute the contract to the users, uh, right from the beginning, we have been looking at the private sector and not discriminating between private, public. Anybody who's got the capability was coming and uh, we were working together and delivering to the users. But today, the ecosystem is changing very fast. And uh, the government has uh, really created a trust, a kind of uh, campaign under Make in India campaign. They have created an initiative. They have set up the, the mechanisms, uh, structures, uh, procedures, uh, processes. They have come up with a policy paper that, yes, Make in India has to happen in the uh, defense also. And uh, the companies like uh, Godrej, they have to be part and parcel of this campaign. Otherwise, we will not be able to meet the objectives set up by the government of India. And uh, I am very happy today that uh, Godrej has fulfilled one requirement. They have created a, a large capability in our country. And uh, tomorrow, this capability will become the profitable capability when they will get more numbers and they will get more systems from the different manufacturers, from designers and uh, it will result into the large employment generation, wealth generation, and knowledge generation in the country. That's the objective of Make in India. Mr. Godrej, have you seen the ecosystem developing and maturing enough uh, for the private sector to take a leading role here? Well, I think, first of all, you know, the encouragement that the private sector has been getting, you know, over the last many years, I think is something really worthwhile because uh, it's not that you know the private sector cannot do it. They can do it. They have to be encouraged to do it. You know, and as Dr. Mishra said, the systems that were there in government, you know, to go to the public sector were different from what is required with the private sector. And I think that's evolved quite a bit. And uh, there's an acceptance uh, of the type of uh, risk and reward that is involved in the private sector. And I think you have, I, I'm seeing, you know, a large number of private industries interested in this area. And you will see more, I think. But it does take a lot of time and investment and patience to develop capability. Now, do you think so? Uh, now it's uh, commercially viable. Uh, to I think, you know, commercial viability depends on quantity. 
to a very large extent, you know, because if you have invested, you know, you want to reap the benefit of that investment. So that you only get when there's quantity. And this is a program which, you know, has quantity and will have quantity in future. Yes, Dr. Mishra, you know, he spoke about the quantity uh, volume driver for becoming the commercial viability. Uh, you are the one who's going to say that, okay, how much quantity I want. But, uh, you know, give us an idea of, uh, you have given an additional 100, but what is the kind of, uh, you know, domestic demand for this? And before we go to export, we have to satisfy our internal customers, which is the armed forces. So again, the role of private sectors, again, the role of our business partners that come into the play. Uh, today we have launched manufacturing of 100. Maybe after some time we will launch manufacturing of some more quantity and uh, that you will come to know. It all depends on the users, uh, the number of quantity they place on us. And it is not only the one missile system. I want to tell you the Godrays uh, and boys, uh, they started their journey with the liquid propulsion engine for Prithvi missile. That's right. And uh, they came to uh, the Brahmos. Then they, That's they a ramjet, right? Ramjet engine, yeah. and they are certainly doing for so many other missile systems also. And uh, the numbers will certainly become more and more uh, as users decide to not go for uh, import, but to produce them indigenously. And uh, that government has very clearly declared, and uh, they are having the intentions also which is giving a lot of faith, trust to our private sector industry. And uh, that's why they're investing in the... You know, we, we were initially doing sub 300 kilometer ranges because we were not a signatory to the MTCR and now we are full members, have a full membership there. So we can go have an extended range. What is the plan for Brahmos uh, uh, for the extended range version? You see, uh, apart from being CEO and MD of Brahmos, I am a scientist and engineer. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, you are it, it is it is for, for the government to decide how much they want to go, and it all depends on the threat perception. Sometimes they may decide 350 kilometers or 400 kilometers or 100 kilometers. So it's just a matter of numbers, and uh, let the user decide what do they want, and uh, Brahmos will deliver. We have always delivered. What about the mini sizes? Because I assume that the air version was little lighter than the normal land and naval version by uh, 2.4 and 2.9 I think tons. That's so, uh, and you're looking at mini versions as well because currently the Sukhoi can carry only one Brahmos and you're looking at multiple uh, uh, Brahmos there. When is that uh, uh, and how far are we from that uh, uh, no, order? And I assume that Godrej will be the one who will be delivering that as well. Of course. Uh, Brahmos NG, uh, it's on the drawing board and uh, we are talking to the users and uh, we are trying to generate the business opportunities. Uh, before we commit funds for further research, further production orders, so as of now this is, uh, you know, uh, I will not say conceptualization phase, but it is uh, in the third phase when we are talking to the users, trying to decide the numbers so that we can make proper investment, capital uh, allocation, and uh, plan the business. So, but engineering wise, we can make it, and we have uh, knowledge, uh, we have capability, and uh, we have done some kind of bench test also, and we can make it. You know, we have come a long way from 2000 when we didn't have the design, or we had the design in Russia, and we have to decipher it. To now, when the private sector like Godrej and other companies are able to build it indigenously, but uh, you said uh, in the conference that you still like to have the Russians participate in it in some way uh, in delivering engines and other uh, other materials. Uh, what's prompting us, uh, Indian companies, to deliver those engines because that brings down the cost effectively, right? No, no. Well, if you leave it on me. I would like to produce uh, my missile 100% using our indigenous material, our uh, factories. <clears throat> but the thing is, Brahmos is a joint venture between India and Russia. And we have almost 50.5 uh, and 49.5 percentage of uh, uh, capital investment into this company. And uh, most of the time, the business partner, they decide that, look, 50% I will do, 50% you do. But in this system, we have already crossed much beyond that. 
Today, uh, 65 percent of the Brahmos is uh, made in the country, and uh, Brahmos weapon system that is made in the country, and uh, 52 percent missile is made in the country. In another one year, uh, we will uh, make uh, more than 65 percent of the missile in the country. Uh, we want. Uh, our partner also to share some business, some profit. That is why I said that let, uh, I would not like to 100% make it in the country. But if it comes to the capability, yes, we are capable to manufacture a whole missile in the country. But it's a business decision. That is why we are uh, getting the things from there. You also spoke about uh, uh, ability to sell Brahmos to the Russians back. Various versions which have been tested, but the one on Sukhoi which has been tested already. Uh, again, Sukhoi is a Russian uh, uh, fighter and that's something which they would be eyeing very closely and seeing whether, you know, we have done it for the first time in India, it can be emulated in Russia as well, the air version which can be come in. Have you been in touch with them on uh, whether they would like to have uh, Brahmos being exported back to their country? Uh, you see, any weapon system is uh, purchased by the country is, uh, you know, uh, keeping the interest of there in the mind and uh, what we feel that uh, the system is available if the Russian feel that it can meet their requirement they will induct it, they will take it but <clears throat> we can't force that uh, this is available you take it if they feel it's required they will take it and uh, they are partner in the company so I don't think there is any problem Mr. Godaj, you know what is the kind of investment that have come in from the group on in defense and how much more you are trying to invest well, as I mentioned to you, you know, we have invested over a, the initial 10-year period in the capabilities, machinery, jigs, fixtures, and everything that's required, the people required, you know. So, I think investment to that extent has been done. Now, it's a question of production. As we require more and more over time, we will invest as required. So, I don't think there's any shortage. No, I mean to say from a point of view that today you're making two a month. Yeah. Uh, you will have uh, air version coming in as well and you want to... Uh, yeah. But capability. you know, to, to go from two to four a month is not a big investment. It's a small investment in, in, in a lot of productivity issues mm. and making sure that the serial production moves. You know, it's if we can have a good flow, you know, of material through and equipment through, etc., machining through, I think it's not more, it's not that difficult to make with the existing facility. We have to organize ourselves better in order to go from two to four. And when I say, uh, you know, over a period of time you have been in space, you have been in missile, you have been in civil aviation, uh, all of them are in, you know, are silos working in together. Uh, will you, are you looking at consolidating all your defense and aerospace functions into one company? Well, all of this is done in one division in our aerospace division is all together, okay? There they may be different work centers, but it's all part of the same. So we share information, share resources, share equipment. So some equipment is specific for a certain thing, you know, but generally speaking, this is all part of the same initiative. Is there any plans for you to, you know, go public with, a, with your aerospace and defense company? No, because you're going to have HAL coming to the market soon. Uh, and well, at the moment, I don't think that's really required for us to do or to consider. But, you know, these are things that one can always consider for the future. Dr. Mishra, final word from you. You know, uh, we've seen the journey of Brahmos over the last 17 years. Uh, in the next five years, uh, what is the kind of journey that you foresee, uh, you know, being not only the CEO of the company, but also, you know, Director General DG, uh, DRDO for Brahmos as well? Uh, you see, <clears throat> today, our country is uh, capable to design, develop and deliver any kind of missiles. And uh, I am sure that in another five years, uh, we will become more refined and refined. And uh, not only our Indian customers, but we will be able to design missile for the global market. And uh, that's a dream of Make in India. Make in India calls for capability, then uh, expansion to meet the requirement numbers and then export to generate wealth in the country. And I'm sure not only the missile but every weapons will follow this cycle and uh, ultimate objective of uh, wealth generation, employment, profit flowing back into the country would, uh, would happen.
Are you looking at any other missile system aside of Brahmos within the Brahmos Aerospace Company? No, no, no. I'm. Uh, you see, because I'm a scientist in DRDO, so I'm talking to you from that yeah, point of view okay. that it is possible. Yeah. And from a wearing the hat of an MD and CEO of Brahmos Aerospace. Yes, uh, wearing the head of uh, Brahmos Aerospace. You see, our strength is we have three strengths. One is precision, accuracy. The second is the range, and the third is the demolition power. So certainly, we would like to increase. Uh, all these three attributes of Brahmos and go to the next level, which naturally occurs, happens in the evolution. So we would like to do that. Dr. Mishra and Mr. Bojay, thank you very much for joining us in Bloomberg Queen. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.